In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a GarageBand drummer track from one track to multiple tracks. So you can have a kick track, a snare track, tom tracks, and you can mix those into your song however you want. Welcome to the Band Guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. Let's make it happen. Before we get started, it's really important to remember how a drum set is recorded in real life. So there's many ways to record a drum set, but the most common is to have overheads over the drums that are capturing the overall drum sound, not just the cymbals, contrary to popular belief, and then to have direct mics on the individual drums, so a kick mic, a snare mic, and tom mics. So that's the most common. So it's overhead, getting an overall drum sound, and then individual direct mics, and you're blending those together to make your drum sound realistic, but still larger than life. So we're gonna try to recreate that in the way that we're multi-tracking our drums out today. So let's go ahead and dive into GarageBand. I've set up a drummer track, and we have a short little part here. The first thing we're gonna do is create a software instrument. New track, software instrument, create. I like to use a software instrument because we want MIDI control over this. We'll actually need it to be able to separate out the tom tracks. You'll see that in just a minute. So my go-to kit is still the Brooklyn kit. If you've watched any videos on this channel, you know I stay in that drum kit. And this is what that sounds like. So now we have a totally MIDI editable track here. So we're gonna treat this track as the overheads. This is gonna be the holistic drum sound. So we're gonna title this Overheads. And we're gonna go ahead and set up our other track. So this is gonna be our kick track, and then we're going to make a snare track, and then we're going to make a tom one for the first tom, the high tom, and then we're going to make a tom two track. So we have kick, overhead, kick, snare, tom one, tom two. We're gonna option click these down so they're on every single channel. All right, and now we have the same thing on every channel. If I were to play this right now, it would be extremely loud, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and figure out how to make this kick just the kick mic. This one's very easy. All we're gonna do is turn off everything except the kick. All right, now we have a kick mic. We're gonna do the same thing for the snare. Uh, let me select the snare track here. All right, easy. So that one's easy, that's super simple. But doing it for the toms is actually a little bit harder because if we isolate out the toms in the same way, we'd have both toms on the same track. But if we want to have individual control over each individual tom, we need to isolate them out by deleting them in the MIDI file. So we'll go down here, we're gonna select this track and I'm gonna hit E to bring up my MIDI editor. I'm gonna zoom in here. Now, each, in, each of these hits is an individual drum or cymbal, and we only want to keep this first drum, this rack tom here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to just this one part so it's looping. Cool, so we have this first tom, tom one, and we wanna delete everything below that. There's two ways to do this. You can either hit this that would so for each note that's being played it'll select every hit on that channel or on that note and then you can hit delete the other way is to simply drag and delete so i like to do that if it's a short section if it's a really long section it's actually easier to go through note by note and just delete each individual note except for the one hit that we want on this individual track here and then same thing down here we want this second tom which I think is right there. So you see this hit right here? So you can see it's right there. So we wanna delete everything other than that. So we're gonna drag up above it, delete all that, and then drag and select all the notes below it and delete that. So then now we have on our two toms. One thing I like to do when I have these toms separated is I actually like my toms to be even wider. So I'm gonna pan them a little bit wider. So now we have everything broken out. We're gonna go one step further, a little bonus tip for you. How do you make your overhead track sound more like overheads? 
Think of what we talked about earlier. The overheads are above the drum kit, capturing the holistic sound of the drum kit. So the way we're gonna go about uh, making this sound more like overheads is to mix as, as if we were those mics. That means it's gonna get a little less of the kick drum because it's further away and the kick drum projects forward instead of up. The snare projects up quite a bit and is really, really loud and is closer to the mic. So we're gonna have a little more snare, a little less kick. The cymbals on here are usually about where I like the cymbals to be. Uh, it's obviously close to those mics, so it does get a fair amount of cymbal bleed. And the toms, I usually turn down a little bit, but it does get a fair amount of toms because they are pointed up. So the volume is going up towards those mics and they're closer to those mics. So soloing this track for a moment, we're going to listen through and just try to make it realistic to an overhead sound. All right, and the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more of this room sound in here. Now, this is not adding room mics, that's kind of a different approach. What this is going to be doing is adding a little bit more of the ambience in the room because these mics are not really close to the individual sources. It's getting the holistic sound. It's also gonna be capturing more of the room noise as well. So we're gonna crank this up just a little bit. It's a subtle change, but it gives a little bit more depth to that sound. All right, and then we're gonna use this at our starting point. This is gonna be at zero. We're gonna mix in the other tracks. We're gonna turn them all the way down and then kind of mix them up to sound good in the overall mix. So mix to the holistic drum sound of the overheads, bring in the individual direct mics to fit that. Cool, so now we have multi-tracks all the way broken out. If you want help making your GarageBand drum sound more real, I have a free guide in the description below that walks you through six steps to get the most out of your GarageBand drums and make them sound way more real. Download that completely free in the description below. And if this video is helpful for you, please be sure to subscribe. I'm back every week with new videos helping you get the most out of your music production. See you soon. Thing at a time